Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job, I work as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. But this is not about my day job, it's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations at the Senior Center or any of the seminars that I've done, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Ashland, that means they want to stay right in Ashland. They don't want to move with their daughters in Texas or their son in California. They want to stay right here. And so the point of the show is really to help you, if you identify with Frank and Mary, uh, to know the people that you need to know and the programs that you need to know about in order to stay right here in Ashland. So with me is my wonderful co-host, whom I su somehow suckered into doing this about two years ago. Um, but he's enjoyed it, I think, and so he's continued to do it. Steve Mitchell, who's uh, been a selectman now for quite a long time um, and, has, and, and is kind of in charge of finding the great people that you should, need to, you should know and the programs you need to know about. He's got a great one for, for, uh, for uh, right now, for December, and I think, I think really um, uh, in, in, the, in the spirit of the season, it's kind of very relevant to this time of year. Steve, whom do we have today? So first of all, uh, thank you, Arthur, for the, for the opening welcome. Appreciate it as always. And uh, I hope everything is well with you and family at home during these times. So our guest today is Rich Paul, who's, who's the town's assessor. And uh, Rich, I'm not sure how long you've worked for Ashland. You've been there as long as I've been in, you know, aware of, of town government and town affairs. And, uh, you know, typically I see you maybe once a year, and that's the day, the evening that you come to a select board meeting and talk about the tax classification process. So if you could uh, spend a minute talking about that process, we just went through it last week at, at our board meeting and uh, you know, talk a little bit about the assessor's office and, and you know, what happens there and, and, and so on. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for that intro. Uh, and thank you, Arthur, for uh, inviting me on your show today. Um, the assessor's office um, does uh, uh, many, many, many things um, other than just set values. Uh, there are a lot of things that, that fall under the assessing umbrella that a lot of people uh, may not be aware of. Um, I think the assessor's office has uh, always had the, the stigma, of course, of just, uh, you know, setting assessments, uh, sending out tax bills, and uh, having people pay their taxes. But you're, you're the guys with those, blue, those, yeah, those green shades, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, kind of looking at the money. Right? Well, <laughs> uh, it's suffice to say we're not very popular. <laughs> uh, wherever we go. But, um, just to give you an overview of, of some of the things that we do in the office, um, you know, of course, uh, I've been blessed to have uh, two, two clerks, two women in the office uh, the whole time I've been there. I've been there uh, 16 plus years now. Wow. And uh, June and Terry have been there uh, as long, uh, well, much longer than I have been, but um, they, they have numerous tax, tasks that they do uh, from day to day uh, just to keep the office you know, running on a daily basis. Um, and that includes fielding phone calls, uh, answering emails, uh, anybody that walks in off the streets um, and has questions, um, they're always there to, to, to help the residents. So uh, I've been blessed in that. that area. Um, they've helped me out a lot over the years. Um, we deal a lot in the office with exemptions, as uh, Steve has pointed out. Um, our office does offer uh, multiple exemptions. I'll get in, into that in a few minutes. Um, but, but we do offer the, the exemptions um, from year to year, most of the time. Um, most people qualify for a certain exemption on a year-to-year -year basis. 
Um, and of course, you know, we have a lot of records um, that we keep track of, um, you know, who qualifies for which exemption uh, in any given year. And um, we've been doing that for a long time. And, and uh, it's given us a chance to actually uh, develop a list um, that we know uh, pretty much who's going to be receiving which exemption um, on any given year. Uh, having said that, we, uh, we do send out a lot of the exemption forms uh, in the mail um, just to make it e easier on the residents, uh, those that do uh, qualify and, and probably will be qualifying uh, for each year. Um, that helps a lot on both ends because we know, uh, you know, once the, the applications start coming back in, uh, we log those in and we keep track. And it gives us a chance to see uh, who we haven't heard from. Um, and once that's established, then we will reach out to that, uh, to those residents uh, numerous times, um, you know, even if it means, you know, sending the same application uh, two or three times. Uh, until they they respond back with their application. That's a, um, that's a great service. That every you know certainly you're not required to do that, right? So no, no, but, of course not. But but it really for, for the folks that you you know you've been trying to been helping in the past. You know, it's kind of a, a friendly reminder from the from the town. Yes, yes. Do yourself a favor. Send the application. In. Uh, one of the biggest um, exemptions that we work with is the clause forty one c and a half, which is commonly known as a senior exemption. And dealing with seniors, um, sometimes it does take two or three mailings to finally uh, get their attention and have them, you know, or uh, have one of their siblings, um, you know, fill out the, the application and submit it on their behalf. Um, you know, a lot of the seniors, you know, they've been accustomed to getting the exemption uh, for many years and uh, sometimes they misplace the application. Sometimes they, they think they've already filled it out and sent it in. So some of those things do happen. So um, it, it's, it's good. And, and, you know, I like the fact that we, we do try uh, and reach out and, and you know, it's, it, it, the exemption is, it's a credit off their taxes, basically. And, um, you know, I mean, if they're going to qualify, then it's, it's basically they deserve to, to get that mm -hmm. exemption. Um, and, and the deadline for, for submitting these applications for exemptions is very forgiving. Um, the residents pretty much have nine months uh, to which to file the application. Starts at, at, right after July 1st for the new fiscal year, and it runs all the way up to April 1st. So um, they have, you know, pretty much three quarters of the year to get the application in. So, uh, again, we try our best just to get these people qualified and, and give them the money that, that they deserve. Uh, yeah. So just to, just to jump in for a second, yeah. Richard, I just wanted to uh, comment also on your staff. I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up both the June and, and Terry. I know June could be one of the longest serving employees in Ashland at this, if not the longest serving at this point in time. <laughs> and I know Terry's been there for, for quite a while. I'm not sure how many years, but uh, you know, definitely a shout out to both of them. And uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, like, like all uh, people that are folks that are um, uh, managers, uh, it's, it's always the folks in the background that are, uh, <laughs> that do a lot of the heavy lifting, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but regarding the, the, the 41 C and a half, which is, is the, the biggest dollar benefit exemption that, that is available. Um, I remember that uh, when I first got on the board, I believe we were giving out an exemption about $400 a year to, to those that qualified. We happened to be filming on the day of our special town meeting when we vote and uh, to support the 41 C and a half program. And this year it's up to $800 for qualifying homeowners, which I, I think is, is tremendous. So we've been able to, to bump that up every year 
you know, incrementally, but right now it's going to be around $800. And yeah, by the way, that, what, uh, one of the reasons I love doing these shows is you guys are always teaching me stuff. I didn't know that. I, I had thought that the, res, that the senior exemplar was like a state imposed number. And I didn't know that the selectmen had, or that the communities have flexibility to change that number. Yeah. Well, it's no, funny that you mentioned that, Arthur, uh, because most of the exemptions uh, are state imposed uh, and, and state regulated. The key to the 41C and a half, which uh, Ashlyn adopted uh, probably a dozen years ago, it, it, it was an offshoot of the clause 41C which was a, a straight exemption for the seniors, uh, $500 credit if you mm -hmm. qualified. The 41C came along uh, through legislation. They changed it up a little bit. Um, not many communities um, have adopted the 41C and a half. Um, I don't know why, but um, uh, I mean, they, they still, uh, I think most communities still give out the 41C. But with the 41C and a half, um, it does allow for some flexibility in, involved. Um, and it does allow for the town to uh, kind of manipulate the, um, the end result somewhat. And that's why uh, we, we've you know, gotten up to the um, $800 level that, that um, we're looking at for this year, this fiscal year. Um, so it, it, it is a little bit different. Um, there is some wiggle room uh, in there that the town can kind of fluctuate a little bit uh, with the exemptions. But um, so I've been there, uh, well, for, the, for roughly a dozen years that we've had it, uh, we've never really gone back uh, in terms of money granted. So it, it definitely moves forward progressively. And again, yeah, this year right. we're looking at a little bit over eight hundred dollars. So, Rich, could you just uh, discuss a, briefly, kind of what qualifies folks for the forty-one C and a half program? Well, the forty-one C and a half, um, it's income based, uh, and we don't look at assets because that's not uh, that's not part of the uh, qualifying base. Uh, it's income based only uh, this year. The ceiling is sixty thousand um, dollars. So if if you're a couple um, and and you uh, fill out the application, you're filling it out as a couple. Uh, we require um, the state tax copies of your state tax forms uh, and federal if you have them. Um, they kind of go hand in hand with the application. And again, you're allowed income wise up to $60,000 uh, in order to qualify. And um, that is state regulated. That's, that's not, um, you know, our numbers or anything like that. That's what the state says. But, that, but that's also a big number. Once again, I do, I do nothing with this kind of work. And, you know, if you, you, most seniors have, they may have significant assets, but their income is always constrained. You know, it's social security, maybe it's a pension you know, and maybe they're earning some interest, you know, from their IRAs or 401ks, but 60,000 for most of my clients, that's a lot of money. Correct, correct, right. it is a lot of money. Um, you'd be surprised though, Arthur, at, at the um, number of applicants that we have to turn away. Uh, really? Yeah, that make too much. Um, but, you know, in other words, they, they don't meet that $60,000 uh, right. minimum. Um, so the 41 C and a half, again, it's just it's a little, it's a derivative of the, uh, the 41 C that most communities in, in the Commonwealth go with. And the 41 C does look at assets as well, income and assets. So the biggest change there, um, is 41 C and a half. Um, so, um, we do have other exemptions, um, we do have an older exemption, which is the um, Clause 17D, and that's also an elderly exemption. Um, we don't have many applicants for that. Um, it's kind of actually kind of phasing out. Uh, we're only down to a couple of applicants for that. Um, 
and that that looks at um, assets only instead of income, and it's called Clause 17D. Um, it again, it's 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 another elderly exemption. Um, not many people go for that. Generally, most people are going to qualify for the uh, 41C and a half um, rather than 17D. But the 17D is kind of limited uh, in terms of assets. Um, and again, um, uh, while we're talking about exemptions, I just want to note that um, if, if anybody is watching that's interested uh, in these, these applications and think they might qualify, certainly call the office, call the assessor's office, 508-881-0101, uh, extension 2012, um, for the assessor's office. And speak to June and Terry um, if you have any questions, and, and they would certainly try to qualify you over the phone, or even send out an application for you to fill out and then um, uh, return it to our office. But um, I think, you know, over the years, um, June and I uh, have done um, some workshops over at the Senior Center, um, you know, re regarding the exemptions. And it just seemed like um, each time we did a workshop, uh, there were fewer and fewer people there um, to hear what we had to say. And the, the, the people that I asked, um, you know, that were, um, you know, coming to those those workshops, basically said, "Well, we already know. We just we just wanted to see if there was anything new." Um, you know, because with the workshops, we were always just trying to get to those people that that didn't know we had exemptions. Um, but that really isn't the case, uh, from what I you know my experience over the years. That I think most people are aware that that our community, as well as any other community. Um, does hand out exemptions. It's just a matter of qualifying for, um, you know, which one you're going to apply for. But um, we all, but, but again, what Steve said, the uh, the senior exemption is definitely the the, the biggest one by far um, that we offer uh, for the uh, you know the the elderly population. In town. So, so there's a few few other ones, Rich. I, uh, there's a senior tax uh, work work write-off uh, that I don't know how, uh, I'm sure it's not operating currently, but I know it, in the past pre-COVID, uh, there were seniors that were taking advantage of the tax write-off work program. Um, I think there's also an exemption from the Community Preservation Act surcharge that's assessed on our tax bills as well. So why don't you talk about a few of the smaller programs that do exist, even though they may not be active at this point? Yes, and just touching on the, the, the CPA, um, it's good to note that if, if you do qualify for the 41C and a half, you'll also qualify for the CPA exemption as well. So it's a double win in regards to that. Uh, again, if you do qualify for the 41C and a half uh, and receive the credit uh, on your tax bill, it will also um, exempt your CPA fee as well on the tax bill. So uh, again, that, that's another way to save uh, the, the... Arthur, I don't know what you're saying, but I think you're muted. So it would exempt, even though you get you get like a, a fixed amount as far as the general the exemption. In terms of the CPA, does it exempt you from all of the all of the CPA surcharge? Yes, it does. Yes, if you qualify for the forty one C and a half. That's great. We do have an application uh, for those that, that that don't qualify for the forty one C and a half. Um, we do have an application for this CPA uh, without really going into it too far, I would just like to say that if, if you're interested, uh, if you're watching and you're interested in the CPA exemption, please call the office uh, and, and June and Terry will spend some time with you and, and um, uh, give you some more insight on how that works. It's, it's limited in terms of income as well, uh, but uh, 
I, I don't want to uh, mislead people uh, in the in the forum here about that, but we 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 do. There is an exemption for the CPA. Uh, we don't get many applicants, but it it does exist. Right. Um, some of the other application uh, exemptions that we offer are the um, uh, the blind exemption. Um, basically, those are uh, pretty much the same people that qualify each year. Um, they do have to uh, uh, provide proof that that they're you know legally uh, blind. Um, I don't want to say totally, but uh, legally blind because there is a difference. Um, and that that comes uh, again that that comes with some proof of, of having that. Uh, we do have veterans exemptions. There's uh, uh, there's a whole list of of uh, different kinds of veterans exemptions, um, and, and they're pretty much all different. Um, but again, uh, for those that qualify for the uh, veterans exemptions. Uh, a lot of that proof will come from the VA, um, and and once we see that that proof in hand, uh, then that, that that's all we need to see uh, to qualify the the veterans. Good. I'm uh, glad you mentioned the veterans uh, benefits because another uh, an, another um, article on tonight's special town meeting has to do with the Brave Act, and the Brave Act uh, provides benefits to Gold Star families. Uh, and that is also, uh, maybe you can speak to that because that has a, uh, uh, a relationship to real estate taxes. Yes, again, um, it's a new exemption and uh, it's aimed at the uh, uh, surviving members or surviving parents and guardians of veterans that have been killed in action. Um, it is on the uh, Warren article tonight at the town's uh, special town meeting, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, the language speaks of, uh, uh, you know, any of the veterans that have been killed in action um, or um, in any, any such way uh, or missing in action. Uh, um, their, the exemption uh, is offered to their uh, parents, surviving parents. Um, and or guardian. Um, another another uh, article tonight on at the special town meeting is uh, also related to the Brave Act. Um, it uh, basically offers to veterans um, a, a chance to um, earn a, a credit on their tax bill um, just by. Um, um, Working in the community, um, and it's it's got limitations, um, but the veteran veterans can volunteer services up to fifteen hundred dollars in tax uh, tax dollars, um, and that works uh, much like the senior uh, work off program that Steve mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, that's all um, regulated through the. Uh, uh, the senior center, uh, Joanne Duffy is in charge of that. Um, we do have a number of seniors in the past that um, that have utilized that tax tax work off program and earned. Uh, they've earned up to uh, fifteen hundred dollars uh, just doing community work, and it's a good chance for them to you know earn some money um, and also volunteer in the community. So it works out well for for both ways. Yeah, I always, I always love that program because you really, you know, cer certainly they're saving some money and that's yeah. Frank and Mary's big goal. If you want to live in your house till you die, you got to be paying the taxes. So to be able to take some of the taxes off is great. And it gives, and these are people who would be, who would be wanting to volunteer a lot of times in the community anyway. So the notion that they can be doing it, they're not making a ton of money, you know, but they're really contributing and feeling really good about it. It's right, wonderful. right, right. And I would say anybody that's interested in, in any of these programs, call the senior center, talk to Joanne or any of the uh, other women that work over there, and they'd gladly be able to set them up and, and um, uh, see them through it. That's great. I have, I have another question for Rich, and it's 
related to if if a senior has a, a dispute, what they feel is a is a dispute with their tax bill, and they're looking for an abatement. What's the process? What happens? Um, it's it's an easy process to be honest with you. Um, basically, the seniors and any other uh, taxpayer in town uh, would follow the, the the same process. So the way it works is uh, once the tax bills uh, are issued, you know, once they go out in the mail and people receive the tax bills, um, if they want to appeal um, their assessment. Uh, not so much their taxes, because there's a difference. What they're appealing is their assessment. And of course, the assessments do drive the taxes um, via the tax rate. Uh, we'll get into that in a couple of minutes. Uh, but I just want to uh, finish that thought on, on the appeal process. Um, so once the, the uh, taxpayer receives their tax bill uh, and they want to appeal their assessment, uh, there's a form that they need to fill out and submit it back to the assessor's office, um, generally by fe February 1st. Um, I believe that is, the, that is when the tax bill is due. Um, and so those dates are going to be the same. I believe this year it changes somewhat because uh, it's always February 1st, but if February 1st falls on a weekend, then it's extended to the fall on the Monday. But let's just say February 1st, just for the sake of convenience. Um, so there is an application. Um, we have it on the website. So um, there's a couple of options. The, uh, the resident can download it off of the website. Uh, they can come into the town hall. Uh, well, in the past, they could come into the town hall and just pick one up at the assessor's office. Um, or um, in some cases, uh, you know, if they want to contact the assessor's office, uh, you know, in the case of a, of a senior that, that uh, can't get out, um, we'll certainly send one out to, uh, to that senior. Um, but it all starts with the application for abatement. And it... Um, it, the resident does take some time to fill it out, um, you know, jot down reasons why they feel that they are overassessed, uh, and submit it back to the office by February 1st. And the February 1st is is um, is a drop dead date. Uh, it's it's regulated by the state, not us. Um, so if we receive it February 2nd, um, it's too late. So. Uh, basically, you have that, that window, that whole month of January to submit your application. Um, past few years have been pretty good. We, um, uh, I think last year we hit an all-time low for the number of appeals. Um, so in my opinion, I think we're, going, we're uh, doing something, something right. Um, so we'll see what happens this year. Um, you know, it's, it's just been a crazy time all around uh, with the pandemic, um, you know, and, and your first thought would be, wow, you know, with the pandemic, nobody's buying or selling, but that, it's been just the opposite. Not uh, sure. the that was a surprise well, to all of us, right? Still going through the roof. Right. Through um, the roof because Ashland has become such a desirable community. People oh, it's a great time to sell, I'll tell you. <laughs> right. So, so, so as I had mentioned at the beginning, Rich, one of my, you know, my major job is to is to be the timekeeper, and I've been kind of watching the time. So, I just want to make both of you aware um, that we probably should be wrapping up. I want to see if Steve had a final question, um, and then we should wrap up. Steve? Yeah, no, I think Rich really did a, a great job uh, this afternoon of describing. I think the, you know, the what's available out there and the importance of reaching out to the uh, assessor's office uh, and or the elder services director, Joanne Duffy, for any information uh, if they have a question. I think, uh, you know, it's a friendly group. Uh, please say hi to, uh, to Terry and June from Martha and I, from Frank and Mary. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it's, uh, it's a good group there. And I know they go out of their way to help anybody and everybody. And, and Steve, yeah. you know, once again, this is what the reason why we're doing this show, you know, is this is exactly the kind of information that a lot of seniors need to have. Many of the seniors who would go to the senior center are, the, are also the ones who would usually know a lot of this stuff. 
but for folks who are more at home, right, this could be a real right. revelation, you know? And so to really give this information, I'm sure that our friends at Ashland Cable will, will put up the, the, you know, the contact information that you had already given, right, Rich, regarding, you know, ways of being, being able to contact yeah, you. Right, right. And, 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 and we really, really appreciate, you know, you're spending the time on the show. So, and Steve, thanks once again for, for doing this. I don't know if this is, I think this is our last show of the season. I, I, don't, I don't know, although we will be, we will be, we'll be, submit, we'll be, there'll be a DVD set that we will be uh, selling. Great, a great stuffing yeah, stock. Greatest right? hits, greatest <laughs> hits. So th thank you very, very much, Rich. Thank you, Steve. Thank uh, you, and, Arthur. Thank you, and folks, thank, thank you, you very much for watching. Thank you, thank you Rich. Anytime. Thank you. Thanks, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland, and happy holidays. Happy holidays.